Oh my Lord, 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 Lord. Oh my Lord, 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 Lord. Oh my Lord, 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 Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Come closer. Mm-hmm. Come closer, my flock. Mm-hmm. 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 We are in fellowship here, and you are all so welcome as we learn together from the Lord Almighty. Indeed, learning is crucial to how I came to be here today. And no matter what you believe or who you believe in, we can sure all agree that there's nothing more important than education. Yeah, see, I know I'm talking to the choir because that's why you're here after all. Now, my name is Bishop Wesley John Gaines and I was born enslaved on October 4th, 1840 in Wilkes County, Georgia. Now, to some of you, my name may sound familiar. That's because I was named after John Wesley, the Anglican priest who founded Methodism. So in some ways, you may say that uh, my path to the ministry was preordained. <laughs> but the great blessing of my life is that uh, despite my circumstances as a child, I dedicated my life to serving him and was able to create a ministry that elevated education for my people and transformed so many people's lives. You see, I was a sickly child, and I spent most of my youth consigned to my bed. But I bet you can't tell that by the look of me now. <laughs> now, but in spite of my infirmity, or perhaps because of it, I took that time to learn to read from the Bible and write, uh, discreetly, of course, because, well, I had to work around the law. You see, us enslaved, we weren't allowed to learn to read or write. So I snuck books and newspapers when I could. When I was a boy, I heard God speak to me and I accepted Christ in the Methodist Episcopal Church South, the church of my father. See, I had a feeling that this would be my path in life. So I followed in the footsteps of my brother, William Gaines, and I accepted the ministry in 1856. Now I'll be known for my work at Big Bethel and Morris Brown College, and I'm gonna get to that soon, but uh, most of my life was dedicated to sharing the word of God, even sometimes in unconventional ways. You see, some of my early sermons as a teenage boy was doing services for dead animals. Oh, yes, now, I know it seems weird, but you got to love all God's creatures, my friends. You know, I met and married a nice young woman during the Civil War, Julia A. Camper. Mm. You see, we lived in different places, but I knew it wouldn't be long until freedom. Mr. Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation moved us all and gave us all hope. So after the war and once slavery was ended in the South, we moved to Atlanta and had one daughter, our angel, Mary Louise, in 1872. Tell me, have you ever felt something so certain that you can feel it in your soul? Well, you know, I knew my calling. So I wasted no time getting ordained a minister in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. I became deacon's order in 1866 and elder's order a year later. Oh yeah, see, I knew when I got on this earth that I was to serve God. So I submitted myself to the itinerary, moving about from place to place, from Atlanta, Georgia, to Athens, Georgia, to Macon, Georgia, to Columbus, and then Macon again. <laughs> yeah. My last stop would be Big Bethel AME Church, which is just down the street from where we stand today on Wheat Street, where we grew our congregation to over 2,000 congregants. Oh, yes. We were blessed with great abundance and good favor. We became one of the most important houses of worship, political institution, community center, and place of learning for black Atlantans during my leadership. And that learning wasn't only just for the congregation. Oh no, I wanted to learn as well. I studied theology and got my doctor of divinity degree from Wilberforce University in 1883. As the proverb says, grab hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Amen. Yeah. Ooh, thank you, Lord Jesus. 
<laughs> but I also had the blessing of working with good people like the Tates, who were buried just over the crest of that hill there behind you. We formed Gate City Colored School in 1879. And we also formed Morris Brown College, the first school in Georgia to be founded entirely by African Americans in the basement of Big Bethel. But in zero and certain hope to the resurrection of eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, I became a permanent resident here in 1912, where I lied next to my wife and daughter, as do many of my congregation. But you know I hate for this sermon to go much longer and have y'all sleeping in the pews, so uh, I think it's time for me to say good night. I want to thank you all for coming out and uh, listening to me and opening up your hearts and minds to learning this evening. But uh, before you go, if you see any of my parishioners along the way, you be sure to tell them that I'm going to see them on Sunday. All right? <laughs> good night, my friends. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes.